Hi everyone, it's Meredith. I hope you are wonderful. Today is my long awaited Scorpio rising video and I hope so much that you love this video. So if you've got your moon sign in Scorpio or you are Scorpio, that's okay too. Stay tuned. We're gonna go a little bit deeper. So I want you to snuggle up with me with your drink, your popcorn, and get ready to go really, really deep. I'm going to give you, like I always do, a little different version, a little deeper version, and the raw, gritty truth about Scorpio, because Scorpios wouldn't have it any other way. I want to hear from you. I want to know your comments on this video and what you think about it, because it is going to be a little bit deeper, and it might be a little bit darker, too. So, um, come join me. We're going to have some fun. It's taken me a long time to put this video up. And um, this is for all my beloved Scorpios and for anybody involved in a Scorpio's life. I think um, this video should probably be mandatory if you're involved with the Scorpio. Um, because this is by far the most complex rising sign that there is. It's a very difficult sign to understand and Scorpios are deeply misunderstood. They are sensitive souls and sensitive creatures, even though they don't look like it. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the rising sign. And if you've seen my other rising sign videos, thank you. And let me know, leave a comment. But the ascendant or the rising sign is our social personality. It's how you greet the world. It's how you approach life. And it's mostly your childhood. It is also your birth. It's your early years. It's literally how you came down the birth canal. And um, it's how we expect the environment to interact with us, see us, and relate to us. And it's how we receive you. So it's how I am going to show up for you. It's our vantage point. It's where or what seat we are watching this performance from, right? So my rising sign is the seat that I choose to watch the show. Um, it's my vantage point. It is my angle, right? And it is also my outlook. It's our lens, it's our mask, and it's our persona. It's the tool that we use um, for the act that we put on between our soul and the environment. It is the front door to our life. It's literally, how do you decorate your front door? Because your rising sign will show you how you decorate your front door and your front door. It's how you ask people to approach you. And a Scorpio rising is asking you to approach them like a Scorpio. It's what we have to trek through to get into our inner self. And it's how we merge with others. It's how we merge actually with the world. And um, our birth time is, is how we calculate our rising sign. So if you don't have your birth time, you won't know your rising sign. That's why your birth time is so, so important. So our birth times actually are the time that we manifest as an individual being um, partially because the birth time sets up the entire chart, the whole zodiacal wheel. It will show me the gateway into every single house in the chart. And if we don't know your birth time, we can't know that. So the ascendant is also the physical body and the way in which we interact with 
touch and taste and feel uh, and the way we experience temperature. And if you have a fixed rising sign, you're less willing to adjust to your environment and you are less movable and you're also less influenceable. <laughs> Is that a word? So if you're a Scorpio rising, you need to think of a couple of things. You need to know about the water element because water is going to be your outward uh, element. It's going to be how people see you, watery. Um, and there's going to be sort of a hidden sensitivity in just being a water sign. Um, your fixed water, so that is ice but there's a sensitivity inside you and a vulnerability. Now with Scorpio rising, nobody ever sees it. Nobody sees it. If you're a Scorpio rising, tell me who you show your vulnerability to. I really want to know anybody. Um, usually it's one person in the whole wide world. So there is a feeling of vulnerability, but that's just because Scorpio rising has been hurt so bad. Um, Scorpio risings are deeply self-protective and they're protective of others too. And they are sympathetic and they feel primal emotions immediately. They just look like they don't. And this is why Scorpio rising is the most complex, the most dynamic, the most twisted. And what I mean by twisted, I mean like, mm, like a braid right? Like three different truths being interwoven. And I say that because they are complex feelers. They usually have enormous EQs and they can see differences. They can see lies and truths very easily and they can see how it's interwoven like a tapestry. They have that ability. And so it is like their energy is like a braid. So stay with me because we're going to unbraid this braid. Um, they, leave, they live deep within themselves and they are extraordinarily private and they need privacy. They have to have privacy. They won't be able to feel fulfilled without some level of privacy. And if you're a sign that doesn't need much privacy, you probably will misunderstand their need for privacy. So Scorpio rising, you need to know that you are a fixed sign for your rising sign and a water sign. You also need to know that powerful Mars and intense Pluto are your chart rulers. So you've got the God of war and you've got God of the underworld together as your rulers. So why would somebody need God of the underworld and the God of, of war to be their rising sign unless, unless they were here to undertake something so massive. So the reason why you have such powerful chart rulers is because you're being asked to be powerful in this lifetime. Let's go into it. I can't wait to tell you more. So Scorpio ascendants um, have an intense ability to see other people's motives right away and immediately. And they're oftentimes the, the psychotherapist in, in, in the world or in your life. And they're the psychotherapists of the Zodiac for sure. And they love exploring esoteric and occult subjects. And while I often talk about them as being so courageous and uh, they are willing to go where angels fear to tread. They have, um, they actually do have a deep fear that runs through them and they have a fear of loss and they have a fear of rejection and they have rejection issues. We're going to talk about this in a minute and we're going to get really, really real. The whole point of my video though 
is to develop compassion for other people. And so if you have a Scorpio rising in your life or a Scorpio, Scorpio moon, Scorpio Mars, or heavy Pluto on the, on the ascendant, um, watch this video in its entirety. You know, Scorpio risings are so emotionally extreme underneath the coolest facade. No other rising sign can rival it for being vindictive, ruthless, or jealous. Look to Mars and look to Pluto. And if they are in, you know, square aspect, these people run with jealousy pumping through their veins, unless they've got a big Aquarian or a big third house or 11th house. And the reason why is, is because this is the truth. If they care about you and if they love you, they will form a loyalty to you where they will die for you. They will hang on the cross upside down for you and be crucified for you. They will run in front of a moving subway to save you. And you won't find loyalty like this. You won't. Now, if you don't reciprocate that kind of loyalty, and you might not know how to, they will sense it, they will feel it, they will be skeptical of you. They won't totally trust you. And if they don't trust you, they're going to start to become jealous. And if they're jealous, and if they, if they have become jealous for a right reason, or a good reason, or you have given them reason to be jealous, or they know they have discovered that they have been betrayed by you, you won't find another sign that can hurt you and betray you and psychologically F with you like a Scorpio. They will hurt you. Beware. Should I put up a disclaimer right now and say, beware, do not watch this video, do not go forward, do not pass go. <laughs> if you don't want the God's honest, gritty, dirty, gruesome truth about Scorpio, oh my God, I am telling you the truth. So come back with me and watch this whole video if you have the courage to do so. These people, Scorpio, Scorpio moons, Scorpios, and Scorpio rising. This is especially about Scorpio rising though, because I'm going to get into this particular trauma that lives inside of the Scorpio rising in a minute. But these people have such sophisticated minds. That's why they are so, so complex. They are cunning and they understand complexity like nobody else on the planet. They are penetrating, they are intuitive, and they have a God-given sixth sense. Are you a Scorpio rising? Do you relate? I wanna hear what you have to say. Are you involved with the Scorpio rising? Do you have a child that's a Scorpio rising? Tell me about them. I want to know. Also, I want to tell you something. If you're with me on this channel, I want you to go check out all my Scorpio videos because I really flush out the archetype of Scorpio and what it thinks and feels and how it operates in all my Scorpio videos. And consider becoming a subscriber and even a super supporter if you want to go deep, deep, deep with me. You get all kinds of free perks and benefits and you get your deep dive natal report plus your horoscope based on your personal chart for the entire year. So it's only 25 cents a day. I wanted to make it affordable for everybody, but you get my secret videos and we know how Scorpios love secrets. So come be a super supporter. You will love it. It is so much fun. And if you are a super supporter, I love you. Did you like my last secret video on my election? predictions? I hope you did. Leave me a comment. Um, 
So what did I want to say to you? I wanted to say to you that Scorpio risings oftentimes have a huge grandparent influence in their life. And this is also the case if you have Pluto on your ascendant. So will you confirm that for me? Did you have a grandparent influence in your life as a Scorpio moon, Scorpio or Scorpio rising especially? Now, my my daughter is really interesting. She has a Scorpio moon and she has not a little grandparent influence, but she has an enormous, I'm talking enormous, like her grandparents are the center of her universe with the exception of her mama. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So if you're Scorpio rising, let me know. Did your grandparents influence you? Um, I think that my daughter, when she becomes a, a woman or later in life, she will say that her grandparents shaped her world in tandem with me. Um, I mean, it, it's like a 50-50. It, it, it's weird, right? Like some grandparents just swoop in and they just do 5%. And some aren't even around. But Scorpio Risings usually have this huge, huge grandparent influence. So let me know if that happened to you in your Scorpio Rising. You're going to find also that sexuality and intimacy themes are huge for Scorpio rising. They are going to be preoccupied with intimacy and sexuality. There's also huge family connections for Scorpio rising, but it's twisted. And I'm going to tell you how it's twisted. I don't mean like sick twisted, although it can be, but this can be really hard on Scorpio rising um, because it is so hard for a Scorpio to say goodbye, to break away, and to truly individuate separate from the family. The Scorpio rising feels the burden of the family because they are so loyal. They are loyal to death. And they feel this push-pull with their families. So they have to break away to create their own identity from mom. But mom is probably in some way, shape, or form, whether she meant to or didn't mean to, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not talking intention right now. But somehow the bond with mom became enmeshed and strong and the Scorpio over identifies with the mom in the, it could be the father, but it's usually the mother. And the mother can become so deeply attached and, and the mother of the Scorpio rising is most likely going to be a sacrificial mother. This is a mother who had to sacrifice greatly. If you are a Scorpio, or Scorpio moon or Scorpio rising, your mother probably, I'd say 90% of you, your mother had to sacrifice greatly to have you. And you recognize that, you respect that, and you appreciate that, and you probably live with a, with a gratitude around that. Now, this could go sideways and end up being kind of sick or this could stay healthy and end up creating an amazing bond. So if the mom over attached to the child, you, the person who I'm talking to, the Scorpio rising, the child feels guilt in separating from the mom. And so the child can't self develop in their autonomy. And they have a love hate and a combative relationship, maybe privately and internally with their mama and that mama can be so overbearing and so controlling because the mom is usually over attached and the child and I am talking child like zero to 12 years old the child then feels guilty for leaving so but they do ultimately leave they might be hated for it they might not but the child ultimately leaves and it's unbearable because there's an enmeshment with their mom. Even if the mom is unhealthy, even if the mom is controlling, even if the mom is sick, the Scorpio can't leave the mother and the Scorpio wants to. And 
this dichotomy creates complexity in every relationship going forward and it is painful so that's why i think scorpios learn a psychological game really early on they had to it wasn't kind or nice to be rude to the mother overtly so they do covert psychological warfare so they shut the mom out and because this is their first primary relationship or they put walls up or they guard themselves or they stop participating or they go into a cave or they cut you off and this is how they rebel inside their relationships and their intimate relationships after 12 years old they learned it with the mom because they couldn't openly reveal their frustration, maybe their hatred, maybe their upsets, maybe their challenge, maybe their love, because they didn't want to be loved harder. They didn't want to be loved more because it's already unbearable. <laughs> and they can't bear to crush their mom. They can't. Because of this loyalty, they have so much loyalty. It's really quite unbearable. Do you feel understood, Scorpio Rising? I want you to. I want you to. I know that the silent suffering inside of Scorpio is unbearable. I lived with a Scorpio for seven years. I, I know the pain and it's really real. I wanna give Scorpio Risings permission to break free from their family burdens and their family obligations. I'm not saying neglect your mama. I don't believe in that, right? Um, I mean, I am the mom I'm talking about a little bit. Thank God I'm primarily healthy. Um, but I have a Scorpio moon child, so I get it. And I want to give you permission, Scorpio risings and Scorpios and Scorpio moon people to individuate and break away. Your mama will survive. And uh, so will your dad. But you have to, because you have to live with you for your whole life long. Now, I'm not saying be neglectful and be an ass and be a jerk or anything like that, but break away enough to individuate so you can have healthy, intimate relationships after the age of 12 years old. But what I want you to do is I want you to find out about your birth. I want you to find out if your birth was a difficult birth, if your birth was a scary birth, if your birth was a challenging birth for your mom, if it was almost a life and death situation, if I would have given birth to my child, um, probably 70 years later before, probably before 1930, I would have died in childbirth. She would have lived, I would have died. In today's age, they have the ability to do a cesarean. They had the ability to help me through the birth of that, and I could and I lived. So I wouldn't say it was life and death. But in truth, if it wasn't the year it was with modern medicine, I would have. So I want you to go look at your own birth story, because coming down the birth canal for a Scorpio rising, there was something dangerous about it. And if you think about birth, birth is always a dance with life and death. The birth, I, I have, I have um, quite a few obstetricians as clients and nurses over at the Swedish, you know, delivery center. I probably have over 50 uh, nurses delivering babies and probably five obstetricians. Um, and I just, I can't believe 
how they are on the portal of birth, but oftentimes or frequently or more than we ever like to know, it doesn't end in birth. Did you see Chrissy Teigen? It just broke my heart. I just cried. Uh, and then her tweet that said, I'm driving home from the hospital after having given birth with no baby. Oh, just so painful. So if you're Scorpio rising, I want you to find your birth story because I'm pretty sure it wasn't just simple. So Scorpio risings, let's talk about their wound. They often feel a deep rejection from somebody they loved, starting from childhood and then going forward. And the family expectation was huge. It was big and it was, it required courage and it required stamina and strength and perseverance. I guarantee you, if you are standing in the face of a Scorpio rising, this person has street smarts and has been forced to go around the block. They know life and they know gritty life. And uh, they've got their, they've got their armor in the closet. So they're strong, but the family expectation was huge and it created emotional or fear of emotional rejection patterns. They felt the, the feeling of either being rejected or I could possibly be rejected if I fail or if I'm not good enough, I could possibly be rejected. I could be thrown out. I, I could be invisible to these people. Um, they usually have power in the house somewhere. There's power. And they oftentimes don't feel like, at first, between zero to 12, they don't feel like they are powerful. Then they find their power. Believe me, they find their power, but it comes out of crisis. But this feeling of rejection shapes them forever going forward. And it makes them feel guarded because they know, they know, or they believe that they're going to get rejected. They're not going to get picked. They're not going to get chosen. They're not going to find the love. They're not, life isn't set up for me. Life doesn't, life isn't going to give me the things I want or need. So subconsciously, they oftentimes attract people who, or experiences that set them up for rejection. And they can attract deep, deep, deep heartbreak into their life. And they can experience that agony of this heartbreak for years, maybe for their whole lifetime. Maybe for their whole lifetime. There is not a sign that gets more devastated than Scorpio or Scorpio rising or the moon when love doesn't work out for them. But this is how they grow their power. And their power is unfathomable. They are strong as steel. And to the degree that they have been wounded is to the same degree that they are strong. Tell me about it, Scorpio Rising. Tell me about it in the comments below. I want to know, do you relate? Tell me about it. Because I feel you. And most people only see your strength. But the wounds have cut so deep. There's lash lacerations in the heart. like no other sign can even know. No other sign even gets this. I'm not being dramatic, I'm being real. It's true. Now listen, Scorpio Risings are so strong. I mean, as Diana Stone, a great teacher of mine, once said, 
they can grow a third arm if they really think about it hard enough. And I say they can levitate a coffee cup if they want to. They are so strong and they will never make you or let you feel sorry for them. But I do hurt for them and that's because I have filleted them open and I have seen the insides and those insides are so sensitive. Now Scorpio comes with a superpower and the superpower is to heal, to heal themselves and to help others heal. That's called transformation. So if I have a wound right here, which I did, I had a huge, do you see the scar? I've got so many scars. Do you see that scar? I had this huge wound, right? Scorpio can heal from that wound probably faster than any other sign. And it's because they are in touch with the pain and the agony and the suffering and the loss that was inside of this wound to then transform into a new perspective to heal the same wound. They always heal. They are so damn courageous and they have a power inside of them that is mesmerizing. God, it's just like, ooh, if I could put your juice into an elixir and drink it, who wouldn't want that, right? Now, Scorpios, forgive me. I'm doing this video for you, and I know you can handle it. Um, so I'm going to get honest with you. You know, you wouldn't have it any other way. You don't want a fake Scorpio rising video or a Scorpio video. I know you don't. Um, and I think more than any other sign, maybe Sagittarius, but I think more than any other sign, I'll still give it to you. You can handle the ugly truth. You prefer the ugly truth over a very beautiful and pretty lie. And um, I have to say that one thing that I've noticed, because I've been watching the, the analytics behind the scenes, I think my Pisces <laughs> like me the most. My Aquarians are making me really popular. <laughs> they watch the videos the most. But my Scorpios... I think they respect me. I do. I think my Scorpios really respect me. I mean, I've pissed some signs off royally. I don't know why, like, but I just have. And um, I, I think my Scorpios are really in it with me on this channel. I really do. It, uh, Scorpio themes are my second most popular after Aquarius uh, themes. And um, I think that it's because Scorpio is so stereotyped. And I refuse, I refuse to stereotype you. I refuse to say, oh, you're about sex and power. Mm -mm. There's a reason why you're about sex and power. So I like to discover the why, not the what. I like to discover the why, not the what. By the way, if you want to get your astrology chart read, my calendar is so busy. I'm booked six weeks out, but I just hired the most incredible astrologers, psychics, mediums, and energy healers. Go to Soul Navigation and go book a reading with one of my astrologers. We have the most affordable rates right now. I mean, it, it just, it barely costs anything. So just go get a reading by one of my astrologers. You're going to love them. They've all been tested for accuracy and they are amazing. They will help you understand how to read your chart. Just say, I want to understand reading my chart. What does my chart say about me? How do, I, how do I figure out what these symbols are? There is so much power in understanding your chart. So go to soulnavigation.com and then click on book a reading and you'll see all the readers. They're incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm in love with them. And they've been getting readings already. And the reviews, my clients that have worked with them are just like, Wow, wow, wow. Meredith, I needed that so badly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful souls. 
anyways, let's keep going. So I have my little notes here and I want to share more with you about Scorpio rising. So um, I'm going to go into the dark side now. Okay. So stick with me. So Scorpios really understand the art of sabotage. And if you are a Scorpio rising, confirm this, like really get into the dialogue and the conversation because people on here want to know. And uh, I'm not a Scorpio rising and I'm not a Scorpio, but I have a lot of Scorpio on my chart. And if you watch my other Scorpio videos, you know, I have my PhD in Scorpio, Scorpio lovers, Scorpio men, Scorpio husbands. <laughs> just one, <laughs> but I have my PhD in Scorpio. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know if that's something to brag about. <laughs> I'm sorry I cracked my own self up. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Got to get my poker, my Scorpio poker face back on. Sorry, I'm not Scorpio. It doesn't come naturally for me. Okay. But Scorpios understand the art of sabotage. That's what I was trying to tell you. And especially self-sabotage. And when they're unhealthy, they have this subconscious uh, uh, like record playing over and over in their head that they're going to be rejected. They're going to be not wanted. They're going to be, you know, they have rejection complexes and it makes having a relationship with Scorpio rising or Scorpio moon or Scorpio so friggin' hard because guess what? You, my friend involved with the Scorpio rising person can't win. They won't let you, you will never win. They will sabotage the relationship and you, my sweet friend, who's not the Scorpio rising is going to lose. What's sad about it is they actually are the ones that lose. They cut themselves off from their own happiness. They cut themselves off from glee. They cut themselves off from joy. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but they sit in waiting, assuming you will reject them. And if you don't, they will play pathological and psychological games with you until you do. They are masterful at sabotage by getting you to eventually reject them, even though you never wanted to, but you had to because how they set the game up for themselves to lose you. They set the game up for themselves to lose you. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me with a Scorpio. With every friggin' Scorpio I've ever known. They set you up to reject them. You're like, you're, you're a Pisces on here. You're, you're a Taurus on here going, what? What is she saying? What is she talking about? Is this woman making, this woman's crazy. Is this woman making sense? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. You want to know the reason why? They have to have a wound. Their life does not work without a wound. The wound is the juice like nectar in a peach. Mm. That wound is so juicy. The pain from the wound creates their identity. They have to have a wound because they're healers and transformers. If there's no wound, there's nothing to transform. If there's no wound, there's no pain to act as a catalyst for transformation. They have to have a wound. So guess what? You are going to be it. I'll show you how it works. They are the very best, literally, at setting up their own demise, their own pain, and their own suffering. And go watch my Everything Scorpio video. Please, please watch it. And watch my Scorpio and Love video because you'll be able to relate if you haven't already. But 
Scorpios and Scorpio rising and Scorpio moon and Scorpio Mars, they need a wound. They need a challenge. They need some impossibility to overcome. And that sweet juice that they suck on is the sadness in their hearts. They need their melancholy to create romance. They need the bitter sweetness of life to feel alive. They need their brutal pain and agony to be able to be the poem, the poetry that lives inside of them. They need the hurt to understand the truth. They don't trust happiness and euphoria and glee and joy. They trust the melancholy, the sadness, the realness of the grit of the sadness that lives inside of loss. They, that's why rejection, rejection is losing, rejection is loss. That's why that is such an enormous piece of their life. They have to have rejection to feel the juice, to propel them into the transformer that they are, the shaman that they are, to then heal the very wound that was created from the rejection. Their wound is their identity. Are you with me? Do you get me? Do you get me? Do you get me? Please tell me you're getting me. They are protective and they are secretive and they are self-protective and they don't show this sadness, not right away. And they really don't show their glee even more than they don't show their sadness. You might feel their melancholy, but it's in there. So it's through their suffering and their self-inflicted wounding, and it's through the wounds from others over time that develop in them unflinching courage and a sense of deep, deep personal power, a type of stamina that you see in the power of those Olympians, like the Nordic cross-country skiers that do the three things like archery, cross-country skiing, and I don't know, what's the third thing they do? What is that? They like, they do this for like days. <laughs> and it's always Norway that wins, <laughs> right? It's like that kind of like crazy friggin' stamina. It's just like, whoa, like really powerful. Cheers. Here's to my Scorpios. Mm. So like Aries rising, did you see my Aries rising? The thing about Aries and Scorpio that are the same is Aries is very outward and bombastic kind of anger and rage. And Scorpio is that same smoldering rage, but it's inside and it's like lethal. And it's psychological. And Aries is just like. <sighs> so they're both ruled by Mars. So if you're Aries or Scorpio rising, your ruling planet of your chart is Mars. And when your ruling planet is Mars, there's courage and power and there's a war to win, a challenge to overcome. You will have a war to win in this lifetime. If you are Aries or Scorpio rising, am I yelling yet? <laughs> Don't hate me. Don't hate me. I'm trying to bring it Scorpio rising. I haven't done this video for a year because it's so friggin' intense. And you know, my, my editor, Carly Ann, she's just beautiful. She's such a love. She's like, it's time. And I'm like, I can't do it. She's like, you got to do it. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it justice, but I just, I don't know. I wanted to bring it. I took her challenge on, so I'm sitting here doing it for you. But, you know, Scorpio Risings and Aries Risings are not looking for happiness. Now, they might think they are, but they're not. They're not. Even if they're a Sagittarius with a Scorpio Rising, the goal is not happiness. Um, the, the goal is so much deeper than that. I think the goal is like depth or richness. It's like rich. 
it's not my lifetime. If I'm a Scorpio rising or a Scorpio moon or Scorpio is not about developing glee or creating joy or creating euphoria. No, it's about the deepest kind of intimacy, like sacrificial intimacy that transforms the soul. So who I started out as and who I ended up being are different creatures. And so Aries and Scorpio are here to fight for something. And they're both oftentimes dealt, you know, a hand in a, a hand in poker, if you will, that puts surviving life as the central theme, both Aries and Scorpio. Scorpio, it's going to be more internalized and probably private and something like about me that I have to survive. Aries, it's going to be about all you, <laughs> all you effers. <laughs> it's going to be about all your problems. And Scorpio, it's going to be about something deeply internal. Um, Hey, my Aquariuses gave me the approval on the Aquarius movie, on the Aquarius videos, that I could swear. So I'm bringing it over here to Scorpio because I really don't think I'm going to offend my Scorpios, right? But, or Aries, because I'm talking about you too. But, you know, they, with Scorpio rising like Aries, surviving life is going to be a central theme. And if that's going to be your central theme, then we need something to challenge your life, to challenge, to hurt, to possibly take away your survival. If you're here to survive life, we need to make life vulnerable or fragile. And so that's why I said this is very complex. We're working with a soul that understands vulnerability and fragility to the nth degree and therefore they develop such courage and strength to the most potent power there is because they're in touch with the vulnerability and the fragile they are in touch with the death so they transform to create life and life and death and living on the extremes, I mean on the extremes, is Scorpio. Scorpio is no shades of gray. It is all or nothing. It's 1,000% or I don't play. And they won't play. It's 1,000 or nothing. And if you're going to be a, uh, maybe they're done with you. They're all in or not. And so these people dance with, devastation and loss and divorce and goodbyes and rejection and death. And they, 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 they dance with the devil or they wrestle the devil and they're not afraid to wrestle the devil, but, 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 but that's how they become powerful. That's how they grow courage. That's why they become so highly capable inside other people's pain. That's why they are true shamans. That's why they are healers. That's why they can handle the gore and the gruesomeness, the gruesome parts of life more than any other sign. If you get shot in the heart, watch the other signs run away. Watch Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, or Scorpio Mars, or Scorpio rip their shirt off, make it into a tourniquet, put it around your bleeding body, throw you over their shoulder, dump you in their fancy car. They don't care that there's blood and guts everywhere and drive you to the hospital and march you in on their shoulder and flip you on the table and say, doctor, you take care of them. They are your emergency team, your ambulance <laughs> and your best friend, and they will die on their sword for you if they care about you. And I'm not joking. Please, if you are a Scorpio rising or a Scorpio, do me a favor. Help me expand the consciousness and this channel and tell us your Scorpio story. Would you share with us, please, please? 
let's let's grow people's perspectives of Scorpio. Everybody wants to demonize the Scorpio. They do, right? It's their favorite sign to demonize. And they want to talk about, you know, the lust and the sex and all that. That that's in there. That's in there. And I'm I'm not going to go too deep into the sexual parts, but the sexual parts are the all or nothing. That's where they kind of want to like you know, consume you and they want to merge. And when they're in love, they're in love. Uh, they, and they just, uh, they just, they're highly sexual creatures, but it's because they crave that level of merge. Um, now there's a secret here that I have to tell you about. And it's, it's an interesting interesting thing one of the biggest lessons for scorpio is they're learning how to lose they're learning how to separate they're learning how to divorce they're learning how to help others die they're learning how to say goodbye they're learning how to shed the old and they they're learning how to let go death divorce and destruction are usually the ways in which they're learning these lessons. They are on the advanced course of saying goodbye. And it is so damn hard for a Scorpio to let go. They hang on for dear life. And that's why the patterns of death and loss are so strong. This is the part where there are true lessons around letting go for Scorpio. It's a huge part of their life and it's what makes their life painful. So the deeper the lesson is around, the, the I should say the deeper lesson around being a Scorpio rising is to heal from that pain of having to have let go, to transform from dysfunctional pa patterns and to evolve into an ability to transform negative energy around loss into meaningful energy. And so through facing crisis filled with pain, they are confronted with truths of that crisis. And it's in finding that truth that the Scorpio rising can transform and change and alter their perspective, their perspective of reality. Their entire life will change when they grow from loss. And that is the process that makes their strength. That is why they are so powerful. So you guys, I'm having a contest. All you have to do is like, comment, share, or subscribe, or become a super supporter and just leave the notes in the comments and you will get your name entered into the hat to receive my deep dive natal report. And I announce it on the 15th of every month. So just like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, ring the bell. I'm trying to get to 40,000 subscribers now. Help me, help me. Anyways, um, and I want you to get your natal report if you don't already have it. But let's keep going. The Scorpio is not interested in frivolity. They need deep experiences and they want all or nothing. They live in the extremes and they live in the depths. And they seek the truth. They are the detective. And like I said earlier, they prefer a really ugly truth over a pretty lie. Trust me, they can handle it. Scorpios can handle it. And they are the, the, the powerful detective. Yes, they are stalking you. <laughs> yes, they are. They are the transformer. They are the ultimate healer. They can become intoxicated with this power that they have, but they need security. And in their highest self, they are you ready for this? They are the magician. Have you ever seen a magician live? I'm telling you, 
you can tell me what the trick is, like how they saw the woman in half. And then I watched the person sawing the woman in half. And I actually really believe it happened. Like I cannot see the trick. They are the magician. They are the archetypal magician too. And the archetypal magician has all the elements. They have fire, earth, air, and water, and they create alchemy. They create cures for cancer. They create elixirs and cocktails that cure HIV. They are the, the truth seekers, the detectives, the magician. They, they are magical. And the other thing is, is you will see the Scorpio rising person will have tasks associated with death. Now, I've told you guys a lot of my story in my super supporter secret videos. And if you're not a super supporter, I really would love for you to be one, um, especially if you lead with love and you, and you want to transform. But one of the things I didn't tell you is that when my dad died, um, he, he almost died twice. And one time, I jumped into bed with him because he was in agony and he was like, oh, and I was like, dad, and I just snuggled him. And uh, I said, dad, don't die, don't die on me, don't die on me. And he was just in agony, big man, big giant guy. And I was snuggling him and uh, I was 36 years old, I was a grown woman, but I was just snuggling my daddy in his bed when he was just in so much gut-wrenching agony and pain. He died from pancreatic cancer and his stomach was just in agony. And he was like, oh, 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 I've never heard my dad in pain. He's like, call the ambulance, call 911, oh. And I was hugging him. and. The kids were at school and his younger children, my younger brother and sister. I was just holding on to him for dear life. I called the ambulance. I was like, Daddy, please don't die. Please don't die. And he stops his moaning and groaning. It's the cutest minute. He's like, oh. And he goes, Mary, don't say that. Of course, I'm not going to die on you. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to die on. And then he said his wife's name on her watch, not yours. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, you can't handle this. I'm like, no, I can't. I cannot handle this. Well, she has five planets in Scorpio. And so when he did die, when he did pass away, I don't like using the word die because it's not really true. And if you didn't watch my video on death, like what is death, please go watch that. And I tell you my dad's story and I tell you what is death. It, 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 the, the, there isn't a thing. This body leaves us, but our soul continues. Anyways, when he did pass away, when he did cross over, when he did become an angel, and he is my guardian angel now, it's cool, he comes almost every single day and talks to me. But what's so funny is I went to bed, it's not funny, I mean, nothing's funny about it, it's the worst day of my entire life. But I say like ironic funny, is he was his word to me. I went to bed at two o'clock in the morning and he died at 2.08. And he died with his wife, five plants in Scorpio, in the room with him. He would not die on me. My soul could not handle it. I'm not Scorpio rising. I'm not a Scorpio. I couldn't have handled it. She has five planets in Scorpio. She handled it with grace. She was the right person. He knew it. He said it to me six week, or three weeks earlier, and then that really happened. So you'll see that the Scorpio rising person will just be assigned death. It's weird. If you're Scorpio rising, let me know, or Scorpio moon or Scorpio. But, you know, Scorpio risings are filled with a wisdom and a strength, and they can see right through you. They look melancholy. They look secretive. They look mysterious. They look powerful. And they look magnetically fascinating. You know, they're not as animated. They are an introverted persona. So they could be a Gemini on the inside or a Sagittarius on the inside and then Scorpio rising. And so that Gemini or that Sag can be muted. But they are the hypnotist in your life, truthfully, because they are hypnotically mysterious and they're hard to get to know. They don't let just anybody in. They discern and they don't play shades of gray. They are black or white. And I don't mean that in a political way. I just mean they're on or off. There's no middle on or off. And um, they have a strength and a will and a tenacity and a ferocity 
to get the job done, whatever it requires. They have an endurance and a determination like you have never seen before. They are also the powerful observer. They're the ones that have this external calm, this calm, cool, collected persona, and they have, an, they have a poker face. They're very hard to read, but they can read you. And they are reserved. They don't seek attention, and they don't trust people who do. Um, they are by far the best at drawing out the pain that lives inside of your soul. And they also are by far, Cancer and Pisces next, uh, extraordinarily helpful in healing that pain. They love you by listening to you. They're going to be either very attractive or very unattractive. Uh, very rarely are they just average. They live on the extremes and they have this penetrating gaze that will burn holes in your eye socket if you dare to hold their eye contact. <laughs> they are seductive and they can make you squirm by just saying hello. <laughs> I'm practicing my Scorpio rising. Um, just in case I get I get asked to act as one <laughs> in my next audition. Um, oftentimes, when they talk, they talk with a slower cadence. They talk to uh, in a more methodical, slow, soft, raspy, husky voice that is slow and seductive and strong and measured, right? Um, and something interesting about Scorpio rising is they know who they are. They do not need you. They are not confused about, hey, oh, who am I? What do I feel? What do I know? No, they know who the hell they are. They don't need you to tell them about their vices or their virtues or their good attributes or their bad. Uh, they don't need your fake compliments or your flattery. Actually, pff, that pff, pff, two thumbs down. <laughs> They don't need you to build them up either. They know what they're good at. They know who they are. Uh, they don't really care about your insults, like psh, let that roll off the back. They also really don't need your approval. Um, I mean, they. I think they. it's nice, but they don't need your opinion. They are self-made. If you've met them after the age of 36 years old, they're cooked. The die is cast, they're done. They don't need that. When they're young and little, they probably do. But after 12, they know themselves. So here's my best advice for anybody involved with the Scorpio of any kind. That's if you have like five planets or three or more planets in the eighth house. If you have Pluto rising, Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, or a Scorpio, do not take their wounds away from them. Don't do it. Don't try to heal their wounds. Don't try to talk them out of their wounds and don't take their wounds away from them. They need their wounds. Yeah. The Scorpio rising is here to live an intense and an intensely meaningful life. Nothing superficial. They will have a life of passion and depth and one that will be transmuted through the suffering into the healing. And that's how they transform. They are the great transformers. And this is no small task. They, they need the pain and suffering to find the music to write about, to sing, to express, to heal the world. They are the pain and suffering in a country music song. They are your favorite country music song, right? She left me broke, had to drink a bottle of whiskey, rolled my Jeep and broke my neck and you know, rolled down the hill and watched my car explode. And in that, they survived it. They lived through it and they transformed forever. Yeah, these are some of the strongest people you will ever have met. These are some of the most passionate people you've ever met. 
these are some of the most courageous people you've ever met. These people wrestle the devil. They want your respect. They want your depth and they will write you off if they believe that you are false, fake, inauthentic, not real, not genuine. They won't play. Take care of yourself, Scorpio Risings. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. Become a super supporter. And go to soulnavigation.com and find one of my amazing readers and book a reading with them. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I hope I get to see you in my secret super supporters club. Take good care. From my house to yours, my home to your home. I wish you the best.